Hello, welcome to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Colin Perry. Welcome, Colin. Thanks, Geraldine. Oh, I should say welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> and you, I, your story is that you um, are a doctorate, you have a doctorate in media and correct. you lecture. That's yeah. correct, yeah. And last time you came on our program, we talked about your near-death experience. That was incredible. Could mm. you recap for the audience who may not know about it. Certainly, yeah. It's um, certainly two very different worlds, what I do for work with my doctorate in media and, and what I experienced, which was certainly mm. very much a spiritual experience. Uh, in 2008, I actually suffered a heart attack and found myself uh, dead, basically, a disembodied spirit floating in darkness. Oh, and, wow. and I called out to Jesus for help. And he, he came and, and collected me and took me by the arm and pulled me up very quickly until I found myself in the presence of angels. And we were sitting around in a, a little circle, I guess, and um, I, I asked who it was and he revealed his identity as, as being the Lord, mm. which was a magnificent thing for me to know. He then gave me a choice as to whether I should choose to go with him into heaven and stay there eternally or whether I would like to return to my life and I had to consider my family, my children, my mm. brain injured daughter, a lot of different factors that I had in my life at that time and chose to come back and he then uh, sent an angel to check on my body and the angel came back and said it was all good to go and I, I found myself back in the ambulance uh, revived wow. which was quite some experience, particularly as I, I had felt like I'd experienced about 20 minutes to half an hour's worth of time. And yet when I came back into my body, only a minute had passed. Oh, and you felt Which, them, that love, that was oh, that, that the was... The warmth and the love of being with Jesus was something I will never forget. He, uh, it was something I actually felt inside. It, it was so strong. Right in your, yeah, every part of your body. Absolutely in the center, in the core, in the heart. I could just feel this very warm, very rich sensation that was too much to bear. It was too good. It was too good to handle. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it was yeah. more better than drugs. Oh, I, I wouldn't even. No comparison. Yeah. <laughs> this was the ultimate. The way I, I like to consider it is if you can remember as a very young child, if you had a loving relationship with your mother and you remember what it was like to be cradled in your mother's arm and loved, mm. I would say you multiply that by a hundred, that lovely warm sensation by a hundred times oh, or wow. more to, to get the scale of how, how good, how much at home it felt, like I belonged there, I'd always belonged there wow. and always would. A uh, beautiful sensation. And you said it almost felt like you, you were going to explode on the inside because mm. of the so much love. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And and you didn't want to come back. <laughs> no, if it wasn't for my responsibilities with my children, there is no way known I wanted to come back. Mm. In, in fact, when I did enter back into my body, I felt like I weighed 10 tons. It was, <laughs> It felt very clumsy and heavy, like I'd entered back into a concrete world. Uh, and uh, yeah, the difference, the difference was just stunning. One thing I always do like to say is we think of spiritual things as unreal, ethereal, ephemeral. It's much more real there mm. than it is here. Wow. Yeah. Reality, the sense of reality, this is true existence is far stronger in, in that realm in that than realm. it is oh, wow. here where we are. Mm. Sounds like you had a, felt like a lot of presence. You know how you can be living on this earth and be not present? Yes. So you found that you really had to be so acutely focused and present. Absolutely. Look, one thing I did understand from then that I still understand very well from that experience now is how much our brain is independent from our soul. Mm. And our mind calculates and thinks and does a lot of what ifs and maybes and hypotheticals and it's always thinking and worrying and doing all these things. But that's not our soul. Mm. I was separate from that. Wow. I was away from all that worry and stress that's so much a part of yeah. our life. And I realize now that's just the, the machine of our brain just working. We're taking too much time on that Absolutely. machine, isn't yes. it? Yes. And what was, is really at the core of us is that little thing, that little spark we call myself, I. And that was separate from all, all of that 
calculation. Yes. And yet people on. focus so much on their emotions and they're taking tablets and drugs and all sorts of things. Absolutely. So. Whereas if we just ignored the machine, I think we'd do a lot better. Yeah. yeah. Focus on the, the spur of God in our Absolutely, hearts. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So after that, you were wanting to tell everyone. Yes, there was uh, naturally when you are a professional person and you have an experience such as this and you start to tell people about it, there, there is a certain challenge in that, in that it can mm. compromise your career. Uh, and I mean, you would think I wouldn't care about that, but of course I still have to live. Yes. Uh, so you have to be careful how you tell people and, and in what circumstances. So I, I found myself after a few experiences becoming quite selective about who I told and, and praying about it, that God would lead the mm. right people to me mm. to, to mm. tell about this. And I found incredibly so many people who had relatives or mother or father or, or mm. partners or husbands or wives that, that were about to die, mm. suddenly just started appearing to me and, and uh, mm. saying, I don't know why I'm telling you this, Colin, but so-and-so is about to die. And I would say, I know exactly why you're telling me. Wow. And I'd share my experience with them. And that was really my motivation for writing the book so that I could give this book to people and that they could understand what I'd experienced mm. and what was, what was likely to be happening <laughs> at death. Yeah. yeah, so from that experience, were you like now, you know, when I spend your whole life being an evangelist, you know, giving that message, is that something that you would like to do in the future? Well, it's part of why I'm here today. Uh, <laughs> Jesus did say to me at the time I was there, he did want me to tell people about what I had experienced and to spread this story on the world so that people were more aware of it. Because I, I think the way our world runs, we do tend to shut down everything spiritual. Um, mm. And the, the church is under pressure because we believe in such spiritual things, but the rest of the world is so opposed. Mm. And there really is a, a, like a battle between light and darkness. And uh, mm. I, I feel, yeah, Jesus really does want me to, to share this experience uh, mm. to as many people as I can to try and get the word out there that there is mm. so much more than we mm. are experiencing in this lifetime. Yeah, that's fantastic. We'll, well, on that note, we'll go for a break. Thank you. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay with us and we'll be back after the break. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Colin Perry. Welcome back, Thanks, Colin. Geraldine. Now, for a person that uh, has got a doctorate in media and also lectures in it, and then suddenly feel this desire to tell people about this near-death experience, what, what happened after that near-death experience? How, how did you cope with suddenly dealing with um, evangelizing this message? Yeah, um, it was a very challenging journey. And, and in some ways I had to divide my life into segments in, in that there mm. was my work life, which was very much about doing my job as I was supposed to do without infringing on that educational space. Uh, but also maintaining this, this really deep need to share this story and to, and to shed the light as much as possible uh, mm. about what had happened. Uh, and, and quite often I do have to bite my tongue in, mm. in a work situation because I know my employees would not be terribly happy if I started on this mm. during a lecture. Uh, it wouldn't be quite where they wanted me to go. <laughs> so I, I have to be very careful about that. But this is why writing a book has been a good, a good thing. Mm. Uh, and I'd love to get this book out there uh, to as many people as we possibly can to, mm. to share this this message to as many people, particularly people who are losing relatives or, or things like that, people who mm. are encountering death. Quite a number of them have found it very helpful just to read this and to, and to be sure. In fact, one of the most touching, uh, deeply moving moments for me was, uh, I mentioned to you, I had a, a brain damaged daughter who'd been mm. hit by a car yes. at age seven. And about a year after I'd had this experience, she was uh, hit by the swine flu. 
and uh, developed very rapidly into pneumonia. And within a week, she was in hospital dying. Mm. Uh, it was so oh, sudden. No. And uh, at this current time of COVID, I mean, it's, it's very relevant to the sorts of yes. uh, situations we find ourselves in. So I was just so blessed at that point in time to be able to sit with her. And now, previous to this, I had, I had sat with her and, and explained to her what had happened to me. Now, um, she was unable to speak and she could only communicate with her left hand, mm. making a few little signs to, to get her meaning across. And as I was telling her about this story, she started to point to herself like this oh, time wow. and time again and got very excited. And I said, wow. what are you telling me? Rebecca, are you telling me you've had experience like this? And, and yeah. she said, yes, yes. The up, the up point was a oh, yes. Wow. So she was very excited. She had been in a coma for three months. Uh -huh. And she was telling me that she'd experienced some sorts of oh, similar things. Wow. Unfortunately, I couldn't get you know the details Damn. from her wow. because she couldn't speak. But she was just overjoyed that, that, that she could tell me and we could share that experience. Oh, that's beautiful. How so, old was she then? She was about 20, 28, 29 oh, at that point. Wow. Yeah. So um, at, as she was dying, I was able to sit with her and just yes. look at her and I could mm. see she was a bit afraid. And I just said to her, Rebecca, remember what you and I have mm. both experienced, that, that we both know you're going to something oh, completely that's... better than this. And, and she was able to just lie. I could see the fear just drain out of her oh, eyes. That's it, was, fantastic. it was rather beautiful. Oh. Yeah. And she passed away very shortly after that, but oh, it was wow. a very special moment. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, to think that what, yeah, after your experience, what, why do you fear death when that's such a beautiful experience? I exactly. mean, it's going home. Yes. Yes. That, that's precisely right. And uh, it's difficult to explain to people who've lost relatives yeah. and to say to them, like we say those words, they're in a better place. But I can guarantee. <laughs> for I know so people. people yeah. I know people will think, "Oh, don't yeah. be patronising when yes. you say I'll be a better place." But you're, yeah. but you're literally I, I experienced really that better do. place. E exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. It's like when people say to me, "Do you believe in God?" I say, "No, I don't believe in God. I know God." Wow. Uh, and that's very much the truth. And, and I think many yes. of us Christians do know God more than we realise in, yeah. in, in the way He speaks to us and communicates with yeah. us and is with us. So do you find that your life is very different to what it was? I mean, you know, the decisions you make about what you do, do you like try to hear God about whether you should, you know, what you should do each day in your life? Is it is that become a very important thing, doing God's will and listening? Or Absolutely. There's, there's mm. a constant, I wouldn't say conflict, but a tension between having to pay the bills and, and yeah. do my work and live my life. Yes. Uh, but knowing that there is this amazing truth that I want to share with people. Mm. Uh, and, and there's this constant desire to be pulling away from the, the mundanities of life and, and yes. teaching and those things that I do towards, towards this sort of uh, evangelizing this message uh, mm. of the goodness of God. Mm. So, yeah, I, I struggle with that one still, and I hope to do more and more of this as time goes on. Mm. Uh, because this to me has become probably the most important aspect of my life. Wow. Along with playing music, which I also <laughs> love. But, uh, yeah. And uh, what's the word salvation? And, and, you know, people sometimes feel shame when they see God. You know, I know um, a relative, actually it was my dad, when he saw God, he had to wash his face. Yeah, I, I will talk into that for a moment because yeah. the, the pr being in the presence of Jesus, something I didn't have time to mention before, I felt filthy, mm. absolutely filthy. Like we read in the wow. Bible about the prophets and people saying, I'm a man of unclean lips. Uh, yeah. That was the sensation. I felt mm. stained. Mm. I felt uh, dirty mm. just with my humanity and, and mm. being made of dust and ashes as we are mm. to find myself in the presence of these beautiful eternal beings. Yeah. I felt this big. I wow. felt so small and so inferior and, and so unworthy mm. to be with them. But, but they were so loving and Jesus was so loving that he actually just basically nursed me through that. And I think that's the experience of everyone who, who finds themselves there in that beautiful place is mm. that there is that adjustment of, of okay, I, I'm no longer 
in this filth, I'm now spiritual and, wow. and how do so I adjust So you didn't even have to say sorry or Jesus didn't have to say I forgive you or that sort of thing? Uh, oh, those sorts of transactions did sort of take okay. place. I, oh, I wow. certainly was expressing that feeling of I don't feel worthy of being yeah, here and yeah. all I can rely on is your mercy, That's, I think was yeah, at the core the of it. Wow. And that was the only reason I could look him in the eye and, and feel that yes. I could be there. Yes. Yes, on that note, we need to go for a break. Sure, which, sure. Uh, You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay with us and we'll be back after the break. Hello. Welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Colin Perry. Welcome back, Colin. Thanks, Geraldine. Well, you've been, I've got really excited about what you were sharing about God's love when you, when you had that near-death experience and you felt His mercy so that, that the shame you felt initially of being in the presence of God was washed away by God's love and yeah. mercy. Yeah. yeah. So what... From that experience, what do you think that God would like to say to Australia today? That is a big question and a very, very good <laughs> question. Look, look, my sense um, from everything I've experienced, uh, from being with him and from coming back into my body, which has been a rather unique experience and gives me a, a bit of a, a vantage point to, to come at that sort of question, um, I think... The best way I can explain it is something that, that Bill Johnson from Bethel Church talks about a bit. is it, like the upside-down kingdom. Mm. And that concept really talks about the values and the priorities that we hold mm. as the highest in heaven's eyes are the lowest. Mm. And the things we don't consider all that important in heaven's eyes are important. And they are the ones we should be striving for. The mm. things that... Uh, with our minds, we consider our careers, our finances, mm. um, our achievements, the power we might accrue through our lives to be the most important pinnacles of our existence. Mm. And, and God looks on that as, I'm not interested in that. So it's upside down. It's upside down. That's the least important thing. How are you treating the little child that you come across mm. on the street? Uh, how are you treating your, your friends and family? What, mm. what are you doing to the people around you in your life? How much love are you sharing? Mm. That is the priority that I've come back with as the most important. Mm. I mean, it's easy to say, but, but uh, I, you know, people who know me would probably say, really? Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. That's, but it, um, it's, I really d believe in it so deeply that love is the, most, the most powerful force. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. And our society always fears that what if you get taken advantage of? What if you don't have those inverted commas healthy boundaries? You know, like yeah. what if you love too much and people take advantage of you? But maybe God is not concerned about that. Well, when we say take advantage, look, there are some really unfortunate things that do happen and people do get mm. abused and, and yeah. terrible stuff does happen. And yeah. that's the realities of the, the world we live in and the devil and destruction mm. and death and all those sorts of forces yeah they very much mm. do exist uh, my message that i would bring to that is in the long run it doesn't matter in the long run if we trust in god and if we love each other as jesus commanded us eventually in time that will be meaningless yes we will move beyond that we'll mm. go to an eternal state yes. that is so far higher than that that we can literally leave that behind. Yes. Uh, not, well, not easy at, at the point in time where it's happening to you. Yes, yes. But, but I like that scripture yeah. that says, love covers a sea of faults. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So if you love most of all, even if, even if people take advantage of you, I suppose it's between them and God, isn't it? Mm, absolutely. At the end of the day. Yes. yes. And I think, look, the power of love comes very much when it's not expected. And, and people who... Uh, angry or, or um, people who may be drug addicted or, or um, people who've been abused. Mm. It, it, when they are loved, 
that it totally transforms them. Mm. When they feel God's love in their life, mm. all of that darkness and anger and bitterness can just drop away and they can experience true love yes. from God in, in such a, a magnificent way that I just see that as being the big message that, that Jesus would love to get through to us. And really, the one commandment he gave us, love one another, you know, that, that's right at the core. Yes. Of we, what, what he wants to teach us. Yes, yeah. and that was your experience, a near-death experience, was the love that, yeah. that, that yeah. transformed you. Absolutely, yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah not the rules and regulations. <laughs> no. Yeah. And look, I, I think with all due respects to the church and the traditions of man in the church, I think in many ways we have missed the, the, mm. the core of the message, which is that love. We're concentrating on the form, the traditions, the, the, the ways, the rituals, the things that we do. The guidelines. Uh, yeah. And I think it gets in the way. Yes. I, I really think it gets in the way. Whereas Jesus would just like to talk to our hearts. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I remember that uh, listening to a, a talk about this drug addict who went into a church barefooted, all scruffy, and mm. during the sermon he walked into the middle, down the aisle, and everyone just turned around and looked at him and thought, what, what's, the, what's, what's anyone going to do? What, you know? And mm. he walked down the things, grunted, and then sat down on the carpet because there's no seat uh, in the middle of the aisle. And everyone didn't know what to do. And suddenly this man with a walking stick went up and everyone to that young man and went down, on this, went down and sat with him. Great. And that was a beautiful act of love. That is the sort of thing I'm talking about. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. So, so doing the reverse of what the world expects of us. Yes. Yeah. And being willing to, to share with people who are in need, uh, you know, so important. Yes. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I, I would love to read your book. And I'm sure other people who are listening to your talk today would um, like to know about, more about how we can get your book um, that Certainly. Yeah. yeah. So Look, if, if you search for Dying to Be Alive Dying to be by alive. C. Thomas Perry, uh, you will find it online. It's Dying available to be alive. through mm -hmm. Ex Libris is probably the best price you will get on it. That's the publisher. It's mm -hmm. also available through Amazon. It's um, paperback or, or electronic mm. version. The, the electronic version is very cheap, like about $4. Oh, so, wow. Uh, I would highly recommend getting that. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to get yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, so that'll be a good Christmas present and give people hope. Yes, hopefully. Yes. Yes. Um, do non Christians, have you found non Christians reading that book? Yeah, look, there's not, surprisingly, there's not that many people around in Australia who are totally non Christians. They, uh -huh. they know a little bit about it and, and they find it interesting. Yes. We've come to the end of the program. Um, but wishing you all the best. Goodbye and God bless you. Thank you, Geraldine, and God bless you. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Tune in next week. Goodbye and God bless you. Yeah.